President of the Republic of Azerbaijan, Mr. Ilham Aliyev. Gentlemen, dear guests, welcome to Azerbaijan. I'm very glad to see you all. I hope you will have a pleasant stay in our city. Uh, today, I think an uh, important event in the history of non-aligned movement. Here in Baku, we create a NAM parliamentary network. I'm very grateful to NAM member states for supporting uh, this initiative of Azerbaijan, which is another step to strengthen our solidarity and mutual support. As a former member of Parliament of Azerbaijan for eight years, as a former colleague of yours, I uh, know very well how important is parliamentary diplomacy and interparliamentary relations, and I'm sure that our parliamentary network not only will uh, uh, contribute to solidarity between our countries, but also will uh, establish close working relations with the different parliamentary organizations of the world. Uh, Non-aligned movement is the second after the United Nations biggest international institution. And of course, we all want uh, that our voice is heard on global scale. Uh, parliamentary network is uh, not the only initiative which we put forward and uh, got your support. Another important initiative is uh, youth network. And uh, next month here in Baku, again, we will have another important event, a youth summit of NAM. So these are steps towards uh, institutional development of NAM. And I think time has come to make practical steps in that direction. Another initiative uh, which Azerbaijan put forward and was uh, supported by member states is the creation of uh, NAM support office in New York. I think also it's uh, right time now to make more steps towards institutional development and uh, that, in its turn, will um, help us to defend our interests on international arena and also strengthen, of course, solidarity between our countries. Uh, Azerbaijan is a relatively new uh, member of NAM. We joined NAM family in 2011. And uh, from the very first days of our activity, we uh, try to contribute to solidarity, mutual support, and uh, promotion of Bandung principles. We fully share Bandung principles, and we consider these principles as the only basis for cooperation and interaction between countries. Territorial integrity, sovereignty, independence, non-interference into each other's affairs. If these principles were preserved by all countries, there would have been no wars, no conflicts, and no injustice. So from the first um, days of our activity, Azerbaijan became uh, very active in uh, all NAM endeavors. And I think um, that was the main reason for unanimous support of uh, Azerbaijan's candidacy to chair non-aligned movement, uh, and this uh, great uh, unanimous support of 120 countries was uh, shown in 2016, was shown to us, and in 2019, in Baku, we organized and successfully held NAM Summit and uh, assigned the chairmanship for the years 2019-2022. And um, also we consider as a great uh, sign of respect to our country and the sign of appreciation of our activity that our chairmanship in NAM 
again by unanimous decision by 120 countries, was extended until late 2023. And we're grateful for that. And uh, we will do everything in order to justify and uh, your uh, support and demonstrate that that was the right choice. Uh, our chairmanship in NAM coincided with COVID-19, and Azerbaijan was one of the countries which actively played a role on the international arena in uh, combating this uh, disease. Uh, we initiated the NAM online summit and held it in May 2020. And that was the first step of uh, NAM member states to consolidate our efforts in uh, approaching pandemic. As a result of that, uh, we launched initiative which was supported by member states to convene a special session of General Assembly uh, in response to COVID-19, which was successfully held in December 2020. And uh, um, our efforts also were aimed not only to strengthen solidarity and provide support, but also were very helpful to World Health Organization, which started to use our database uh, with respect to uh, support to countries and with respect to humanitarian and medical assistance. So the database which we created in member states uh, was and is uh, very useful uh, in treating uh, this pandemic and any other uh, disease which may occur in the future. We provided uh, financial support and humanitarian support to more than 80 countries. Also, we made a donation of 10 million US dollars to World Health Organization, and half of that money was assigned directly to NAM member states. So our efforts with respect to uh, approach to COVID-19, uh, I think had a very important uh, global reflection because we were one of the countries which was openly uh, protesting against vaccine nationalism. We all remember in the early days and months of pandemic, uh, some countries, wealthy countries, were stockpiling uh, vaccines maybe three, four times more than they needed, and thus not allowing other countries to get access to vaccines. We all witnessed that wealthy countries were using absolute majority of the vaccines, while other countries were helpless. And therefore, uh, our uh, struggle against vaccine nationalism was also supported by United Nations. And uh, I think that also had a very important impact on uh, fair distribution of vaccines. So in other words, Azerbaijan always was demonstrating its position on uh, regional issues, on global issues. And of course, as a chair of NAM, we will continue to fight against injustice, against violation of international law, against uh, selective approach to different conflicts and against discrimination. Uh, we also witnessed the great support of NAM member states. As I said, unanimous decision to assign chairmanship of NAM and then to extend it was a clear demonstration of attitude of countries towards Azerbaijan. Another important sign of solidarity we saw in the most difficult times of our country, when we were liberating our territories after almost 30 years of Armenian occupation. Uh, we were fighting on our own land. We were restoring justice, restoring international law. But unfortunately, some countries uh, launched a campaign against us, campaign of discreditation, slander, and blackmail. And uh, unfortunately, this was not only a verbal campaign or 
uh, public accusations. Some countries tried to uh, bring this issue, our due course, to the United Nations, to Security Council, but our friends, members of NAM at that time, uh, members of uh, UN Security Council blocked anti-Azerbaijani statement and blocked the attempt of uh, accusation against Azerbaijan and thus did not allow pro-Armenian global forces to uh, attack Azerbaijan. We are very grateful for that, for your solidarity. And uh, once again, I'd like to say that we were restoring justice. Azerbaijan, a country which faced one of the biggest injustices in the world, occupation by Armenia of almost 20 percent of our territories, uh, which resulted in ethnic cleansing. Uh, one million of Azerbaijanis became refugees and internally displaced persons. Our historical and religious heritage was erased by Armenian occupants. And now visitors of liberated territories can see it with their own eyes, this barbarism, vandalism, and uh, desecration of our mosques and uh, destruction of our religious and cultural monuments. These are all facts. No one can ignore it, no matter how pro-Armenian forces and their supporters want to neglect. They are not able to neglect these facts because already thousands, maybe tens, tens of thousands of people visited liberated territories, including uh, foreign visitors, of course, politicians, uh, members of parliament, chairmen of parliament, and the journalists and experts and ordinary people, visitors. Uh, we put an end to that. Mm, we uh, restored justice and international law. And when, in 2019, uh, in Baku, I was speaking at the NAM summit, I was saying that we will defend justice and international law. We know uh, what it means when you cannot restore it yourself, when you depend on uh, others. But uh, we were waiting for many years, for almost 30 years. We were waiting for international community to help to resolve this injustice and put an end to occupation. For that purpose, OEC created Minsk Group in 1992, uh, which was supposed to find a solution to this conflict. In other words, to put an end to occupation. But on the contrary, Minsk Group became an instrument in the hands of those who wanted this occupation to last forever. And now, when Azerbaijan resolved the conflict, put an end to occupation, restored its territorial integrity by military and then political means, there is no need for Minsk Group any longer. We already said farewell to Minsk Group, but unfortunately, Armenia and some others want to revitalize it. It is not possible. It is already dead. And uh, we, as a country who suffered from occupation, we say that openly. And uh, I think that any further speculation about OSC means group is not only counterproductive, but also destructive for uh, possible peace in our region. On 10th uh, November 2020, after 44 days of liberation war, patriotic war, Armenia had to capitulate and to admit its defeat. And then was forced to liberate the remaining territories which were not liberated on the battlefield. And it took only 44 days for us but we waited for almost 30 years. And during the years of occupation, on many occasions, speaking on uh, different international events, I was calling for sanctions to be imposed on Armenia and saying that the only way how to resolve this problem peacefully is to impose sanctions on Armenia. The sanctions which will be efficient and which will be damaging to the economy, but unfortunately, no sanctions was imposed. On the contrary, Armenia 
was getting much more support from some pro-Armenian uh, politicians than Azerbaijan. And uh, as we saw, uh, the only purpose of uh, Minsk Group activity was to freeze the conflict and to keep our lands under occupation forever. So we put an end to that uh, policy and liberated our lands by force and by our political wisdom. Uh, I can tell you that uh, situation with uh, conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan is not only a regional issue, it is a global issue because it's a full violation not only of basic international principles, it was also violation and non-implementation of UN Security Council resolutions. In 1993, United Nations Security Council adopted four resolutions demanding immediate, full, and unconditional withdrawal of Armenian troops from our territory. And the question is why these resolutions were not implemented. No one can answer, or maybe do not want to answer. Another question is why, in some cases, resolutions of Security Council are implemented within days, and in our case, they were on paper for 28 years and would have remained on paper for another 28 years if not brave Azerbaijani military servicemen who liberated uh, our lands. And uh, it's a question of reforms of United Nations and its Security Council, because if resolutions are not implemented, then what's the sense of that? We speak for reforms, and I think that this should be also discussed on the level of um, heads of state and government of NAM, and to put an end to selective implementation of United Nations Security Council based on uh, political preferences. Uh, in general, I would say that uh, we all know that non-aligned movement is the second biggest after United Nations international institutions. And I think that we need to consolidate our efforts to uh, strengthen our potential, to strengthen solidarity, try to speak uh, with one voice. I know that there are certain problems between some member states. I think that NAM can be a platform to find resolution to these problems, and also should be a platform to defend the interests of uh, our countries. Because members of NAM, many members of NAM, they have similar history, similar problems, faced many times injustice, and uh, try to defend their national interests. And we can do it together. Together we can do it more efficiently, and we speak for that. Therefore, uh, initiatives of Azerbaijan as a chairman of NAM were aimed at strengthening solidarity and mutual support and institutional development of our institution, and maybe at certain uh, stage to transform it into organization. I know that throughout the history of NAM, there have been uh, discussions about that. So I suggest maybe to restart these discussions. It's high time, because today when we see global polarization in the world, we see wars, conflicts, unpredictable uh, situation, food crisis, energy crisis, humanitarian crisis. I think NAM can be a platform of countries which can uh, not only defend their interests, support each other, but also play more active role on international arena. We in Azerbaijan would like to see it, and I hope that uh, our distinguished guests uh, representatives of parliaments of uh, NAM member states will uh, contribute to that. And of course, I will continue my consultations with heads of states and government of NAM. Once again, dear friends, I'd like to thank you for being with us. Uh, we will try to do everything to show traditional Azerbaijani hospitality to you. I hope that uh, the conference will be not only very 
productive, but also be a good chance for interaction to establishing closer contacts. And as a result, we will see the progress in solidarity, in mutual support, and in strengthening of our institutions. Thank you very much.